Hi guys, and welcome to my let's play in pretty much every sense of the word of Star Trek Online. The reason I've uh, said that is that this isn't going to be uh, like my standard stuff where I basically do a walkthrough showing off the uh, how to beat the game to the best of my ability because, uh, well, Star Trek Online's an MMO, it's kind of hard to do that thing. Uh, it does have a single player or story driven campaign but you can't uh, really beat the game, all you can do is achieve all you want to do. And by doing this I just intend to show uh, some of the things that go on in Star Trek Online, um, how I'm building stuff together, and as you can see here I have an assault cruiser uh, which I've named the Sathanus which should uh, let you in on what my next actual walkthrough style LP is going to do but just going through some of the things that I have on the ship the first thing that you saw there was hazard emitters pretty much a necessity in this game when you're fighting Romulans on the Borg it stops you from being set on fire constantly and is a heal over time Polarized Hull is kind of a new one. Uh, this Universal Station I've got a science officer for. Really big resistances and more importantly for fighting the Borg and anti-tractor beam weapon. Moving on to tactical, we've got Tactical Team 1 which is probably the best all-round ability in the game or at least Tactical Team is. Um, buff to your weapons and makes your shields sort of um, reinforce themselves. And then basically what the ship's built round. We have beam array fire at will 2. I am an anti-proton beam boat at the moment and that's buffed with attack pattern beta 2 which lowers the resistances of my targets. I did have attack pattern omega here as another anti-hold and just basically a huge damage buff but I think that beta 2 is just better. I might swap round with beta 1 and um, beam array fire at will 3 but I think beam array fire at will 3 is a uh, tier 4 ability so that's a bit of a shame. I have torpedo high yield on my tactical ensign there. I did have torpedo spread, but that was when I had quantum torpedoes. Right now I'm using the Romulan hyperplasma torpedo, so I think I get away with it a bit more. Uh, emergency power to weapons is the first technical ability, and I have what the build is pretty much based around here with auxiliary power to the emergency battery. As you can notice, it just diverts power from the auxiliary battery to everything else, but it also has those three lines at the bottom. Um, which mean that when I activate it all the cooldowns on my bridge officer abilities are reduced by 30%. Um, I also have directed energy modulation which means I shoot through shields and this one reverse shield polarity 3 um, when combined with tactical team pretty much takes your shields from zero to full in a matter of seconds so it's an incredible sort of uh, oh shit help me button. Engineering Team 1 for dealing with Romulans it's very good because it's a counter to viral matrix and it's also a big hull heal. And finally I have a second copy here of auxiliary power to the emergency battery. So you can pretty much see the focus of this build is just to keep my bridge officer uh, abilities on pretty much global cooldown um, and also to keep my uh, other power levels very high. Uh, that ability, the Quantum Singularity Manipulation, that is the uh, reward you get for completing the Romulan uh, Reputation line. It's a massive science ability buff, plus you get a cloak which you can fire through. Uh, then I've got Fleet Science Team, Subnucleonic Beam, which is also one of the biggest bastard moves that you can make in the game. Sensor Scan 3, which is a huge debuff for... Uh, your opponent's damage resistance so you can see combined with attack pattern beta 2 as well your opponents pretty much have no resistance uh, scattering field is just a huge buff on your own resistances and then we've just got some general abilities fleet support brace for impact evasive maneuvers 3 photonic fleet 3 is my final science ability summons a fleet to help me um, they do do damage it's very limited but they can be quite useful and then we've got ramming speed 3 and I think brace for, oh no I've already gone through brace for impact so that was a bit rush there but uh, I think you can get the uh, basics of what my build is about anyone who's uh, like familiar with STO especially at level 50 will uh, pretty much know this build if they're uh, familiar with the cruiser uh, as you can see I'm not too sure that the build that I have here is optimal by any stretch 
uh, I've tried to give myself the best uh, abilities to keep my weapon power high, to give my energy weapons the best uh, chance that I possibly can. It's quite funny because I am a science captain and uh, I just have no abilities in science at all. Uh, pro might be a bit of a waste, probably should have been an NG and just some ground based skills but I really don't uh, do a huge amount of ground work now that I've hit 50. So just showing off what I actually have on the ship as far as weaponry goes I mentioned I'm an anti-proton beam boat so I have six of these anti-proton Mark 11 beam arrays they are pretty much the ones that you craft uh, at the end of the game they're pretty much end game crafting as you can see they do about uh, looking at about 850 DPS each um, there when it factors in all the uh, buffs that I have on board. It'll, they'll do more when I use beam array fire at will etc. I also have the kinetic cutting beam here which is a craftable item from the Borg reputation line. Um, it's basically a 360 de degree arc beam which um, does kinetic damage rather than energy damage and in this game torpedoes and the kinetic beam do um, kinetic damage and what happens is that shields pretty much absorb all kinetic damage but kinetic damage is horrible to the hull and that's where the uh, that's where the kinetic beam comes in uh, as you can see up front I'm using the Romulan hyperplasma torpedo and I also have two bridge officers who improve the recharge time on it um, this is capable of utterly shitting out plasma torpedoes and you will uh, do a huge amount of damage if those uh, bridge officers do trigger. I think that they're not quite cumulative, I think that having two of them means you've got about a 36% chance of reducing it rather than 40 but it's still a pretty phenomenal, uh, pretty phenomenal ability. That also gives me a two set as well. I also have a two set in my deflector and impulse here. They're only Mark 10 because I haven't maxed out the uh, Omega reputation yet. You'll probably see me working towards that as I make more videos. The assimilated sub transwarp engines are amazing. Um, when you're in sector space or going between sectors, you're limited to transwarp 10. I just guess that they've redefined the uh, warp scale. However, these engines allow you to go to a think about warp uh, without any real special uh, additions. You can easily maintain over trans warp 20 with them. So, if you're doing something like Tour the Galaxy or something like that, it's incredibly good. And with the two set, I get this. Uh, I get the autonomous regeneration on the hull, which gives me a big hull repair. Uh, buff and it also has a chance to proc something which basically repairs your hull no matter what the um, no matter what state it's in. For shields I've got the Rim prototype covariant that's just a placeholder at the moment I did have the full Mark 12 Jamhadar set but that's probably a bit better on PvP than it is on PvE um, so that's a placeholder until I get either a Mako shield or a uh, I might go for a Borg shield, but I doubt it, and I'm currently crafting the Mark 10 Mako shield. Some consoles, I have the Zero Point Energy Conduit. Basically, I'm looking to get all three of the consoles which add to your critical, so that would be the Zero Point, the Assimilated Universal Console, and the uh, Tachyo Kinetic Converter. And this gives me, the two set gives me 7.6% plasma damage, which it's a bit of a buff to the torpedo fire but it's not that useful at the moment but I'm aiming for the final build of this ship to uh, be Romulan plasma based rather than anti-proton so that will come in very useful got a couple of armors there just to give me some resistances and an RCS accelerator just to make sure I don't turn like a complete and utter uh, canal barge still don't turn brilliantly. Uh, assimilated console, I'm pretty sure that just about every ship in the game has this. It's, uh, you know, every ship that can have it has it. And uh, as a side note to something that some of you might find uh, might find amusing, I uh, got that before I did any STFs. So I basically ground that assimilated console just off standard red alerts. And for my tactical consoles, I just have three purple Mark 11 um, anti-proton boosters. 
So I, it's not exactly like a 500 million EC ship, but it's still not bad. Um, and combined together, that gives me about 53,000 hull, 281% um, hull repair, which is pretty good. Uh, almost 10,000 shields on every arc. The only thing I'm really disappointed at is my kinetic resistance. I think it's really bad. And so that's something I'm definitely going to be working on. Uh, bonus accuracy and uh, critical chance are definitely things I'm going to be working on because I want the build to crit as much as possible. That's the whole point of uh, building an anti-proton build because anti-proton weaponry crits for extra damage. So your entire uh, your entire basis for the build is just to crit as much as you possibly can, and that's why beam array fire at will is uh, is around. So, as you can see, I'm tier 5 on the Romulan uh, on the Romulan reputation system, and as you can see, I've screwed up taking the abilities, but never mind. Uh, this is a ground-based ability at tier 1. Again, don't really use it. This was one I made a huge mistake on. I took enhanced shields instead of uh, the precision, which gives you a 3% crit chance in space. That would have been amazing. In fact, I'm contemplating respecking just to get that. Um, Reactive shielding, again these are just ground based abilities so I'm not really a huge fan of them, I've just got ones to stay alive basically. Um, then I had a choice to an emergency secondary shielding which again is just a, oh god help me, and this one which is placating on critical hit. Now since I've got a critical hit build I figured that uh, anything like this would be a decent, uh, a decent thing to have, plus placating your enemy is just sick. <laughs> And you've already seen the quantum uh, singularity ability at tier five. It's uh, you basically get a hundred percent boost to science abilities. Sorry, a one hundred boost to all your science abilities for eight seconds. And after three seconds, you cloak and you have the ability to fire through the cloak. Um, and your shields are also up as well. It's basically the scimitar cloak. And we've just got weapon training for the first two levels of Omega here rather than hull repairing nanites uh, I think that that's okay going down that line and here I've got regenerative shield augmentation over uh, remodulate weapons to be honest again I don't do a huge amount of groundwork so I'm not really that interested in those uh, tier 4 I'll have probably this because this has a chance to uh, pretty much knacker your opponent's hull whenever you fire and uh, you fire an awful lot when you're using beam array fire at will. And finally it's a medical nanite cloud which is a ground ability. Uh, as you can see I am crafting the Mako shield so you know hopefully should have that in a few days or so. I mean I could grind it out in one night but uh, I think that's probably a bit too much to be uh, too much to be asking for. And here's the new event reputation area, um, recently introduced because of the crystalline entity event. And as you can see by looking at my inventory, I did complete it because I have the crystal shard here, so uh, managed to at least do that. And I've just got a load of sort of commodities in here as well, so nothing really too much to write home about. About six and a half million energy credits in the bank, I haven't been spending much recently quite a few fleet crates and fleet marks and way too much dilithium ore. Um, gonna have to... Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of uh, refining going on. But anyway, uh, this is the reputation system and it's this is where I want to be. As you can see here, Romulan Plasma Beam Array with the Accuracy 2 modifier. This is probably where I want to be. Um, the extra accuracy is funneled into your critical hit chance so that uh, makes the accuracy times two exceedingly good um, and additionally because it's a hybrid plasma and disruptor weapon uh, disruptors put a uh, or have a chance of procking a um, debuff to your opponent which reduces their resistances so when combined with attack pattern beta again your opponent pretty much has no resistances going and just takes full damage from whatever you do now, I am part of a fleet, I am part of the STO Collective, uh, who've been around for quite a long time in the game. Um, we're not uh, high level Starbase yet, but we do have some things in the uh, Starbase that I would, uh, I would appreciate having. Uh, once the loading screen is done, you'll see an awful lot of this when you're playing uh, STO. I will cut it out in the future. 
but for now I'm going to leave it in. Don't worry, it doesn't keep going up at this rate. Or does it? Maybe the rest of this video is just a loading screen. Oh, no, there we go. Yep. Okay, so finally we're on the station, and yes, my science officer is a red-headed female with seven of nines uh, outfit on, go figure. Um, the uh, gun that looks very much like it came from inside a Kinder Egg is actually a uh, anti-proton pulse wave assault rifle. I went the wrong way there because that's where you go to hand in, um, not hand in, to get uh, fleet mark uh, duty officer assignments. I will be going throughout this LP. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of sort of guides up that people might want to see things like uh, earning energy credits other things like earning dilithium and definitely one thing which I think is probably the most important system in the game and that's managing your duty officers correctly but in the meantime I've said I wanted to go down the Romulan disruptor line um, however being 28 and a half thousand dilithium each I might have to go for a stopgap measure and as you can see, I've got 157,000 fleet credits, and I will probably be looking into these. These are the uh, Advanced Fleet Anti-Proton Beam Arrays. They're Mark 12. They have four modifiers, as opposed to the uh, two or three that are on standard purple weapons. And with double accuracy as well, 20% uh, percent accuracy and 20 crit severity bonus that naturally comes from anti-proton weapons, they hit pretty hard. And... Uh, yeah, so as far as this uh, Let's Play goes, I will obviously do a lot of the STFs, I'll do a couple of guides as I've already said, but let me know what you guys want. I mean, do you want me to play through the storyline? Because I can do if you guys want to. And one of my uh, one of my goals, um, certainly with this channel as it's become now, because I do apologise for the fact that this channel went dead for quite a, uh, quite a period of time, however... Um, I do enjoy making videos, as you can see I finished Elite Force very quickly once I got back onto it. And my aim is to try and produce, especially when I'm doing STO, and I'm probably going to have another game on the go at the time, I would like to try and aim for between 5 and 10 videos a week. Um, just to, I mean, just to keep the channel active as well, and it would be nice if... Uh, you know, one of the aims, just from a personal point of view, you know, maybe look towards partnership in the future. But at the moment, I'm very happy with how it's going. But uh, with the fact that I have had subscribers come in, and, um, you know, even when the channel's not been active, and I have hit 500 recently, I think that it's, uh, you know, thank you guys for your for staying with me. There's a lot of you who could have, you know, could have left and didn't. So uh, hopefully I can keep producing stuff for you guys. You guys are going to enjoy this. I think it's going to be quite fun doing it. Um, you'll get to see me obviously make uh, mistakes. I will pass data as well. So um, yeah, overall, thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.